This video is all about determining how to create a pivot point for the solar array. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. In a past video, I showed you guys the model for the solar ground mount. This will allow a tilting mechanism for different times of the year for the solar panel to optimize the output. This is a short section of Z channel. This is what the solar panels will actually be bolted to. And then I have the five inch galvanized pipe here, which is the top structural component so my thought was initially just to take a U-bolt and connect it up to the five inch pipe. And every time that I want to adjust the angle, I could loosen the nuts, adjust the angle and tighten the nuts again. But I thought maybe I could dress this up in something a little bit more elegant that doesn't require me to loosen and then tighten these nuts. I'm playing around with the idea of getting some kind of Arduino mechanism, uh, controller that could adjust this automatically. To do that, of course, I could not have these nuts requiring loosening and tightening each time. Now, I was given this big six and five eighth inch pipe, this big heavy monster. I cut out one ring from that already. Now, this ring is larger than the outside diameter of this five inch pipe. I uh, tried to create some kind of bushing using some Schedule 40 PVC pipe. I'm going to use my miter saw and I connected it to the inverter. Next, I just have to cut a slit in these. So I have my rings with a slit in them. And now I'm gonna put these in the oven. I think what I did last time was 325 degrees for 20 minutes, and that should make them pliable enough. Okay, these guys are hot. <laughs> I might have actually left them in too long. Um, they were in there about 25 minutes, and they, uh, they don't look fantastic. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna let this cool and we'll check on it later. I've allowed some time for this to cool. Now we'll unwrap it. Closer look at this and see what we've got. Looks like we're almost there. So let me put the belt sander on this and sand it down just a little bit. So as we can see, this is a relatively tight fit, little play, but it still allows for rotation. So I showed you this idea I have of taking the steel ring with some PVC bushing in the middle of it. Let me now show you the second idea I have. Over here I have a big chunk of oak. Uh, I actually cut this out of a tree about two years ago. You can see it's nice and thick. It's about three inches thick. What I think I could do with this guy is make a wooden yoke out of it. So let's do that now.
it's not exactly perfect. There's still a little bit of twist to it, which you can't take out with a planer. I would need to set up a sled uh, in order to take that rock out of it. But uh, since I'm going to be cutting this into shorter pieces, it's very minimal and I'm just going to leave it. This is uh, 7 and 7 eighths of this board. That was the final cut that I made. But I, I, I marked that hole just at 3 inches down. What that will allow is I'm going to be cutting out a 5 inch circle out of this guy. I want the wood that's to the Z channel side to be narrower and I want most of the meat of this lumber to, to be to the outside of that. This would be a fantastic application for a drill press so that I could get a perpendicular hole all the way through because I'm not going to be able to cut this in one pass from one side. I'm going to have to do it from both sides, top and bottom. I don't have a drill press, so I'm just using this little block. I'm at three and an eighth. And I'm at three. The other side, I'm at three and an eighth. So I was not able to drill that perfect. This is my circle cutting jig. I want to cut a five inch diameter hole. So I just line it up here, put this little pin in it, and then I'm going to raise this because I need the router bit below the surface. two holes were not parallel to each other. Uh, you can kind of see that offset. So what I'll do is um, I'll do a little bit of sanding in here and then uh, if, I, if I do this on the next one I'll know to measure down and not trust uh, this guy. Instead I'll just measure down from the surface. My saw is usually a lot more powerful than that. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? I don't know, I just, I love oak. You know, especially that it came off my own property and I made it. There's just something about it. I don't know. After putting it on the five inch pipe, I use some threaded rod, half inch diameter, and then I could put the Z channel on this uh, with some nuts, and this would allow for the tilting mechanism. What I showed you earlier in this video is to use these PVC plastic bushings, put them on the pipe with a metal ring over that. I would use a long U bolt. And then I would need a steel gusset up here to prevent the Z channel from deforming when I really sock that down. If I use the oak, I would soak this overnight in some used motor oil in advance of installing it. And that would uh, preserve it and keep it from rotting. Uh, with the galvanized steel, I would spray it down with some of that uh, cold galvanized compound uh, on all the cut edges. Now, both methods would probably work. Uh, it was fun to build the two to see them side by side. If you have any questions uh, and I didn't cover something about this, that uh, let me know in the comments below. And please let me know which way you would go. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.